Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cat team. On the last video we added the start game button to our menu. Today we are going to use a toggle to turn the music on or off. If you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like and if you want more Unity 5 tutorials remember to subscribe to our channel. So in order to create a sound controller let's start by adding a UI toggle to our, to our canvas. So to do this I'm going to select the canvas from the hierarchy right click on it with the mouse and go to UI and select uh, toggle right here okay next with our toggle selected let's change its name to music toggle alright and let's change the anchor to top right okay this should work just fine. Next, um, let's change the size of the toggle so it fits with our UI system. So on the shell game object of the music toggle, we have a background game object, right? That is a child of the music toggle. So let's change the here on the rec transform. Let's change the width and the height from 20 to 60 in both fields all right so as you guys can see we now have a bigger box here so let's repeat the process to the shape mark m object which is a child of the background and as you guys can see we have 2020 here let's change it to 60 60 as well okay so we now have a bad better looking um better looking box here So as you can see the text on the toggle is still small and uh, over our toggle box as you guys can see here. So to solve this we are actually going to select the label game object here and start making some modifications. First off let's change the text to music. Alright, no, I don't want a paragraph, I just want one line. Okay. Now on the rec transform, let's set the, the size of it in order to match the height and of the box, of the checkbox. So let's set the top and the bottom to minus 18. This should work I believe. Yes. Alright, so as you can see, now the, the, the top and bottom values now match the size of our box. Next, let's set the font to 45. And now you can actually have a nice looking text, right? So this is looking better, but the text is still over the checkbox. So again, on the rec transform of our, compo of our label game object here, we are going to change the left value to 39, all right? So 39 here. And as you can see now you can't read the, all the letters here because we also need to change the right value. So let's change the right value to minus 15 for example. And now you can read it all again. Okay. So next we want to set the vertical alignment of the text to middle. So we go here and on the paragraph alignment we go to vertical and select middle. Alright. Um, and this is looking just good, just good. Okay, so now we want to change the font of the text to be to match the font of our button here, right? So all I need to do is to go to the font here and drag it over the front field, just like we did with our button. And once we have changed the font, we will see that we need to adjust the parameters again, right? So this time let's set left to, let me think, 48 for example. And let's change the right to minus 85 perhaps. Yes, this looks good. Now to assure that the text always fits the size, we now actually are going to turn the best fit parameter on, just like we did with our button, right? So 
this will assure that we always have the, the best fit to the, to, to the size we actually want the text. So great. Now all you need to do is to change the color of the text to white. So I'm going here. We have the color here. Let's just change it to white. Yes, looking good. Now um, let's change the color of the checkbox and the check mark. So let's go to the checkbox first. Background here. And now here on the color, I'm actually actually going to use this toggle, this this um, button right here, so I can copy the color of our button. Yes, so I select the color, and as you guys can see, now we have the color applied to our box as well. However, remember that we also want some transparency on it, so we need to change the alpha channel of the color. So right now we have no transparency, but we want it transparent. So let's change the the alpha channel to 20, right? Okay, looking quite nice. And now we actually need to change the check mark color as well. So let's go here, change the color to white. Make sure it's white. It seems to be good. Okay. Seems to be good, yes. So now it's time to add the, to set the our toggle in place, right? So let's go select the music toggle again. And on the rec transform, let's set the position to for example minus 280. And let's set the Y to minus 160. Yes, I think it's this looks good here. All right, so finally, um, let's add some functionality to our toggle. All right, because if you actually play the game right now, you can turn it on or off, but nothing is actually happening. So let's add some functionality to it. So we want our toggle to turn the background music on or off. So in order to do that, we need to actually have an audio source in our scene. So let's select the canvas game object here. And let's add the audio source component. So add component, let's search for audio. And we actually found several audio components here. Let's select audio source right here. Okay. Um, next, let's, let's make sure that the uh, play on awake is turned on and the loop is also on so once the music finish it starts playing again okay play on awake make sure that the music starts playing once you enter the scene all right next we actually need to add an empty an empty uh, music file to our audio source in order to have some music so i have an empty an mp3 file here that i'm actually going to use you can use any mp3 as you guys want so again, let's select the canvas, select, drag the mp3 over the audio clip field, alright? So uh, if we actually now press play, this is all you will get. Okay, so as you guys can see we have music, but this toggle is not working. So let's work on that now. So next we are actually going to open our UI manager uh, script. I already have it open here on Visual Studio. And the first thing we need is actually a reference to our audio source component, right? So let's start by creating one. So let's create private audio source. Let's search for it. Where it is? Here it is audio source and let's call it audio right so we are actually using private because um, the audio source is on the same game object so we actually can get a reference to it without using the unity interface we can get it by code so we're actually going to use do that on start so I'm going to create start method public void start 
and now what I'm going to do is to set it audio equals and now I'm going to get the component from my game object so get component from the game object I'm in which will be the the canvas game object where we have the script and we also have the audio source component right so we can get the component like this and I want to audio source right okay so let's close this okay so now we have our reference to our, our audio source components once we'll the scene starts okay so next we actually need to create a method for the toggle what we want to this method to this method is if the music is on the, the our function should turn it off and if the music is off our function should turn the music on right so this is actually a quite simple method so before that let me just get some comments here whoops not this okay this is actually a reference to the audio source component all right and here whoops sorry about that we are actually going to get the reference of the game object of the component get the audio source component in the game object okay so again let's then create our function to create the the functionality to our toggle right so let's call it this will be public uh, void let's call it music on off all right And now let's just check for the state of the music, right? So again, if we actually go here to Unity, let me show you guys. We have a field here called mute that you can turn music turn music mute or not mute, right? So we are going to use, actually use this field in the in the script to turn music on or off. Alright, so going back again, let's say if audio mute is set to true which means that we have no music we want to set the audio mute to off which means we will turn oops sorry we want to set it to off so we want to set it to false meaning that we want music on right so if the audio mute is false, is true, meaning that we have no music, we want to turn the audio mute to false to turn the music on. So we actually do audio mute equals to false. Else, meaning that if the audio mute is false, we want to turn it true, so we turn the music off. So audio dot mute equal to true right so this function should solve our issues let me just the music on or off right and let's save it okay so let's get back to unity and now let's select the toggle game toggle music game object and on the bottom of the toggle component We'll find the empty list here. Let's click on plus sign. And next, let's search for our canvas game object since it's where we have our script. Double click on it. Here on no function, we click and we select UI manager. And we search for music on or music on off. Here it is. We select it. All right. So if we actually test our music, test our scene, we'll see that music controller should be working just fine. So let's test it. So we start with music as you guys can see. And if I go here, I turn music off. I go here, I turn music on, off, on. 
so this is it guys this is how you use the toggle component of unity ui on the next lesson we'll continue working on our menu and we'll add some more ui components to it hope you enjoyed today's lesson until the next video and have a nice day